Hello everyone, today I'll be continuing a guide I started on modding Sonic Heroes. Now if you didn't follow along, I've put a download in the description for where I left off at, but if you have been, feel free to just continue from here. So the first thing you'll want to do if you haven't already is copy these files from your main Sonic Heroes directory to your mod folder so that you have something to work with. These are the main level geometry, the lighting, the render zones or chunks, the texture patterns, and the textures themselves if you want to add those. So go ahead and make sure those are in here if you haven't, and we're going to go ahead and open them. And as you'll, you can see, we have Seaside Hill here, as expected. Also, if you've downloaded here it was Power Plant 0.7.3, then you'll be able to see it immediately load all of these things at once, which is kind of nice. So if you've done that, we can go ahead and select all these. And export them. You can kind of export them wherever. I guess it'd be good to just export them in something that made somewhat sense. So I'll just do this. It may take a moment, but don't worry too much about it. So once that's exported, we can go ahead and edit it in Max if we want to, although we'll have to go ahead and import that. Before we go further, let's go ahead and export our textures so that they show up. Now we will use Magic TXD for this. We can just double click them, do export all, do export and then select your folder. I've already done it so I won't do it again, but I'll link this program in the description. It's very easy to use and you can edit textures with them very easily. But anyways, once you've done that, go ahead and open up the, script, the tools folder in Heroes Power Plant. Now you'll see there's an older script. I'm providing this newer one because it's better. And we're going to go ahead and put vertical UV flip because we didn't do that when we were exporting from Power Plant. And then we'll do import from path. This may take a minute, so bear with me. You can also import these into Blender or whatever else, but you will be losing out on some details because you won't have vertex colors. On another small note, you do not have to flip the UVs again after you go ahead and export from Max. But anyways, as you can see here, the level is in here fine. We can see everything perfectly. And it's pretty clear that everything imported as it's supposed to be. But now let's say that we want to edit something. Let's pick, I don't know, let's pick these trees here just to make something obvious really quick. We can do that, we can just go ahead and stretch them a bunch. That should be pretty noticeable in game. And this could be anything, but I'm going to use these trees in it as an example. Next we'll just put a big box here, because why not? That'll be pretty notable. And you know what? Because I can, I'm going to import something from Super Smash Brothers. There we go. That looks like it should be fun to play with. We don't really need to make the level completable anyway. Okay, so now that that's done, now that that's done, let's go ahead and isolate a few things because it's easier to work with. So I'm just going to group this for a moment. We'll be ungrouping it later because we have to for Heroes Power Plant. We'll be selecting that. As we can see, that's P and 16. So we need to make sure that we select everything in P and 16. Just pick this too. Let's isolate. Now, 
Now that we've separated these from the others temporarily, let's look at these closer. As we can see, these have some black outlines. These too have some black outlines. This is because these use alpha or transparent textures. And to deal with those, they need to be named a specific thing so that they can actually be shown in game properly. So we could organize this in a few different ways. You can go ahead and use the layer manager here and stick different things in different layers. I find that a pretty nice way to handle things. We can just go ahead and call this layer, I don't know, PN16. And then that's a pretty nice way to set that up. You can go ahead and select all of those at once by doing this. Or you can just go ahead and name them. It doesn't really matter. But either way, the point is to get them organized. Now, now you may want to put the things that aren't transparent into a new category. To do this, let's go ahead and select everything that isn't transparent here. Or perhaps select everything that is transparent and then invert. You don't really have to do all of this here, but I'm just going to select a good few. So let's go ahead and do select invert. And then let's make a new category here. And we'll call this ON16. Now we have all these here, and these should be mostly opaque things when we're going in game. Doesn't really matter here for testing purposes, but when you're wanting to do this on your own, then you may want to care about that. Now since these are both 16, as I said, we can go ahead and go back out. And since everything in PN16 is already in here, we can select all these. We can go ahead and go back to our model folder. We can go ahead and Export as SO1 PN. Well, I messed up here. Make sure to match the type exactly. If it is not at capital S01, it will not work for this. That will export everything with its proper vertex coloring. Now, if we want to go ahead and get the rest of this, what we'll do is we will select everything from ON16. So we'll just come down here, do this. Then if we go back into our layers, we can go ahead and right click this, add selection to new parent, pick that. And now all of those are in ON16, so we can just click ON16, select child nodes, and now we have all of ON16 here. We can do export selected, SO1, ON16.dae, and there we go. Now, if we want to see how this will look in the editor, we can go here and start importing. So what we can do is we can import our ON16 here. As you can see, that just appears all white for now, but don't worry too much about that. And we can also import our PN16, which by the way, you'll want to remove the old ones, but that's not a big deal, I assume. And as you can see in Power Plan, it now shows up like this, which means that in game, it should also show up like this. But yeah, we have a bit of a problem here. As you can see, these new things have no texturing, no texturing at all. That's not how it should look, is it? And go back to the textures.
as you can see, we've got all these things here. I have a few extras, and I'll explain what those are for in a bit. But we'll go in here, we'll select all those, and then we'll go back to our stage and add that to our file here. We can just drag it in. It is that simple. And now that we've dragged it in, everything should show up. So we're just going to close Power Plant. We're going to close this now that we've saved it. We are going to reopen Power Plant. We are going to open our file here. And as you can see, Mushroom Kingdom and the parts that we made transparent are showing up that way. There is some weirdness, as you can see, but that can be fixed. It just isn't with what the w method that we used. But now we can see that there. There's just one problem with this. The problem is that we didn't give it any collision. If we were to go in game, as the, the camera can clip through, we can also clip through. So what we have to do for that is export the level collision. That's something else we should copy over. So what you'll want to do is make a collisions folder in your base folder here. Go into Sonic Heroes. And for the hell of it, let's just copy all three. This is your main one. This is your water collision which will make the little splashes and everything, and this is Death Collision. Now, we can go ahead and open these in Power Plant itself, and we can export the collision to an object file, which we can make use of. Export to object, and we'll just call this SO1. Now, Let's go back in here, let's go to import, go to that collisions folder, and import the so1.opt. Make sure that you have flip zy on. Now ignore that most things don't have textures right now. That's just because we went into isolation mode and exited. Max says weird things when things are vert colored and you do that. But anyways, we have the collision in. We have it selected. Now, as you can see, that looks great and all. It covers all these things, but it does not cover what we wanted. You can make your own custom collision for this then. Or you can go ahead and select all of those things that you want. So to make it easy, let's just make another layer. Call it collisions. And let's go ahead and select this layer, this layer, this layer, and select child nodes. And now we have all of that selected. We can go ahead and do export selected. And this time we'll want to export the selected as an object file. And let's call this SO1 edit, just in case. We do want to flip this YZ, or it will not be working properly. And there you go. Now let's go ahead and go back to our collision editor. Let's open SO1.cl. We'll do auto here, although you may not always want to do auto because sometimes auto can cause issues. And now we'll want to go ahead and take that in. And hopefully that'll work without crashing in game. Now, if we want to mess with some of the other collisions, we can go in here, say we want to add some death zones. We can export that to SO1, XX. Now if you do do death zones, 
note as it says here, you have to have this suffix here. You absolutely have to. Likewise for water, you have to have this suffix here or you will not see your little splashes. And you can go ahead and import those and export those the same way as the other collision here and then add on to it just the same. Also worth noting is that the collision editor here does not, does not have a save button. As soon as you hit import object, it is saved. One last thing I'd like to go over. Let's look at these little cherries here. They're pretty plain, but you know what? We can mess with those a bit. Why don't we make a texture pattern for them? Now we've already taken the TXC here and we've imported it, it into the folder. And we have something for the water already. And if we play it here, well, you won't see the water play because it uses a different texture ID in this one but it could play, and you will see it play in game. Now let's add another texture pattern here because we want to animate our little cherries. And let's go back to this place. So what we want to do is select the texture name here and apply it to the animation name and the texture name. And you can have the texture be something completely different if you want to, but for organization purposes, it's probably best to keep it the same here. Let's say we want this to animate fairly fast. So let's set it at 12 frames there. Let's add a frame. Let's say texture number one. Let's add another frame. and just have it play for shits here. Let's set that to number three, I guess, and we'll make that texture number two. Set that to, oh, now you can see it's starting to animate. You can set that to texture number one again. And we will set this to nine. I guess we have frame zero, so that'll already be 12. We can set this to texture number three. And as you can see, they do a nice little rotation thing there. And you can do about anything with this. You can do fake UV scrolling and everything. But anyways, that's about all you have to do to make a little texture animation. And we can go ahead and save that, or save as if you want to save it in a specific place, but I think we're good here. And now we can go ahead and go in game. So once you've started the game, let's go ahead and see what this actually looks like. Okay. Right. And aside from being blasted into oblivion from the speed booster, we can see that we can walk on this. And it seems to be perfectly fine. It's about how it should look. All these ones with the weird artifacting behind it, where you can see through the background, are the ones that we didn't properly make transparent. But otherwise, it works. And we can even see, if we go into free cam, that these are animating just as we set. It's a shitty animation, we could do better, but this is good enough for an example. Thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in for later parts whenever I get around to getting them out.